This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so I'm on call today. I'm on my first one of three. We've got a reach-in dairy case that is too warm. The outside compressor's not running, so let's go take a look and see what we got going on. So this is some of the equipment, but this thing's out here. It's an older grocery store. So, let's see whether we got airflow, stuff like that. As you can see, we're in a small town here. It's not every day you see people's laundry out outside. So let's go over here and take a look at this equipment here. It's very old, not in a great shape. This is it. Let's see what we got to work with here. Got our silicone case. And the compressor is not hot. First thing I usually do is I feel it to see if it's hot. If it is, it's been running or trying to run. Maybe it's been shutting off on thermal overload. Receiver feels a little warm, but compressor surely would be warm. Next thing I usually do is I come over and I check the condenser coil. Although it's bent to heck and back and it's probably 30 years old, you can actually see through it. So I'm gonna say either we got a safety device keeping it open or contactor defective or something of the sorts. Let's see if there's any poison ivy in this mess. Not really good at eyeballing that crap. Okay. I see a spider there. I can hear the defrost clock running. But the contactor's not pulled in. So let's see if we've got power to that contactor. I have a bad feeling about some of those things there. Because that right there, I thought it was a jagged leaf. Like that right there. Cardboard is your friend. So we got that there. Grab the old meter and see what we got going on here. We obviously have some power to it because the clock sounds like it's running. 211, 211, 212. Going into our coil. We have 211 volts to that coil right there. This is going to be an easy one. The switch mechanism works, but like I said, we've got 211 right there. Tells me the coil's junk for some reason. Of course, we ain't got no disconnects out here, I don't think, to kill the power. Gonna need to get a new contactor on there. Hopefully that's all that's wrong with it. You can see through the coil there and piece, bits and pieces. Yeah, it kinda, kinda can. It's it's just a wreck. Romex wire and everything else, it's just a, a beauty. She is a real beauty, Clark. We're gonna get this stuff running. I got literally three calls in three different counties to run so i'm going to see if we can find the power for this i've got a tracer i could trace it off of that but let's just see if we can find it dairy cooler here on eight i don't think that's that's obviously ain't a single breaker so that's not probably it walk-in freezer produce walk-in cooler outside that would really be nice to know which one's which this looks like dairy and it's got three fuses. I must jump it from there to the back one. Let's see if that get it. That kind of sucks. Somebody pushes the door shut, closes and shocks the crap out of you. It's awesome. Ain't no lockout tag out for that thing. Appears we got a storm brewing. So we got us a contactor here. Let's go ahead and get this puppy in there. You don't hear the clock running. Power, which does not appear. Let's go to ground. Hopefully it's actually grounded. So if we work fast before somebody bumps the things into the plug, we should be able to get this done before we get shocked. Otherwise you can pull all the fuses. Kind of do the one at a time thing here. You can go through with a marker and mark them. All right, so we give this a sniff and you can smell it. Yeah, you can smell the coils burnt. If we used to yank the bottom off of that, you could get a good eyeball on it and you'd probably see that it's burnt. That's uh, what happened there. They had a power outage yesterday, they had storms coming through. We've got everything kind of tightened back up. I do not like the way some of that crap looks. That looks really shady right there. We got this cleaned up, got, you know, you can actually find things. I hate crimps like that. 
We got all this restripped so that it's nice and clean. Should be able to kick it on and make it run. Kind of got to line that up a little bit. There we go. All right, look at that. Feels warm. Got some good old fashioned accumulator action working there. Clock don't look too far off here. There we go. Got a one hour defrost, timed off. It does not look like there's a solenoid. This thing just shuts off and goes pop boink. That's the end of it. So yeah, it wouldn't matter. Well, how the heck's this going to a defrost? Defrost just breaks it, that's what they're doing. So that brown wire to go into the coil there comes down and the floor wire is your technically normally closed circuit. When it goes to defrost, it opens, breaks power to four. Power is wire nutted up here to that right there on that brown wire, and that's what kills the contactor, and then she kicks off. So there's no pump down on this thing at all. You've got a loss of charge is what I'm gonna call it. I, we can find this out real quick. We'll put it into defrost, and it should just go plunk. Yeah, it don't pump down at all. That's some fancy stuff right there. Yeah, that won't get you shocked or nothing. You got a fan cycle here. Compressor's coming back really cold on that side right there. Amazing feat of engineering here. How it's not rubbed into one another and all that is beyond me. Gonna do a full maintenance or any of that crap. We know the coil's clean, we've got a full sight glass, and the contactor is bad, simple enough. Looks to me like it's staying full. On to the next one. Whoop. All right, so we're heading to our next call now. This is a smoke alarm duct detector, I believe. It keeps going off. They turn it off and it obviously stops, so I don't know if the duct detector's false alarmed or what. Like I said, we had a storm come through, it caused power outages, and I think that's what may have caused this one too. Kind of like this last one, so that's what we're heading to now. All right, so we're here. Let's get up here and see what we can find out. Done a call on that one, middle of winter. It should be, I believe that one there. Okay, so I'm trying to find it. They said it's the newer unit. None of these look that new. I thought it was that one over there, but that's definitely not it. I luckily wrote something on it as what it's for. It'd be nice if they were all running, just the one you wasn't it wasn't running, you'd know is it. I'm not really sure where the kitchen, you would think it would be out here because that's where all the exhaust hoods are at. I don't know why it's so hard not to just write down what the hell area that's taken care of. It could be this monstrosity here. It's the age of this one looks fairly newer. It's 19, but it's running, so. I'm gonna say it's probably not it. Fans running on this one. All these have the thermostats mounted in the return air duct. So if the smoke detector's going off, the air, the fan's not gonna be running. These ones here I know are for a certain area of the building. Try not to tell you where I'm at, because you know, this one here is kind of a more secured location. I'm gonna say it's gotta be that one right down there. Putting the ear up against it, the thing's not running. Hopefully the smoke detectors are not down below because it is a pain in the butt to get into this building. This has got a startup date of June of 17. It's my yellow marker. To cut for shutdown, none of that's cut there. So that means they probably did it hardcore. Usually it would go into the main wire in a thermostat. I don't think this is it either. If it is, it's wired in down below or something. Let's see if the fan runs if we jump it or if it's actual intercepted fans running belt sounds like it's loose yeah i'm gonna have to get a hold of them find out which one's what this is a little more painted but than what it would appear yeah it's a little loose probably not aligned real wonderful either oh yeah it's nice and worn 
It's actually fairly tight. Problem is you got the, uh, the pulley all jacked. Pretty darn tight. I mean, it's got a little deflection there, not much. Under normal circumstances, that belt would do it do just fine. I guess it, maybe it is a little loose. Let's tighten it just a touch. That's a lot better. Let's see if we get a squawk. That's better. Doesn't squeak as bad. Yeah, it's been tightened down so tight that the bushing there is wearing out. That's why it's nice. I don't think this is also it because not only because the fan's running, but we've got water in there, so that means it's been running. Hasn't rained. Well, it has rained recently, but not enough to fill that up. Let's go look for another one that may have no water in the drain, condensate trap. It just kicked on, so we know that's not it. We know this one's not it because it's shaking and rumbling and has water in its trap. Let's go back up here to the top. Waste of time. I should have asked them what area, but it's. I don't think half of them would know. That one there's got water dripping out of it, so it's running. I don't know. I, I don't even. I think it's probably just a flipping false alarm on the part of the alarm system company because it's telling them they're having a smoke alarm and all this crap is running. Not as warm as that other one. It looks like a 22 also, which means belts could be getting loose. Okay, we're looking at this heap of love here. Belts are really rusty. Obviously it's not doing nothing. So that connects to this, what looks like an exhaust system for probably a kitchen. All right, called alarm dispatch, asked them what it was. They got a trouble code, got forwarded to their tech guy that's on call for the alarm panel company. He said a trouble code is different than an alarm code and they would check it out on Monday and just let it go. I offered to go look it up, see if I can find where it was at. They didn't have any way to look it up. So on to the next call. All right, so we're heading to the next one, which is a freezer, two door freezer is not working. They usually have problems with a lot of their equipment. Let's go take a look, see what we got there. All right, so I guess a true two-door freezer. This thing's been through World War III and back again. I've replaced several things on it over the years, and it's just beyond ready to die, but it won't die completely, or they just keep resurrecting it. At least they unplugged it. Yeah, I got it unplugged there. Let's take a look at this evaporator, see if it's plugged full of crud or not. <clears throat> it's right here on the grill line, so you got all the nasty crap from the fryers plugging up the filter, which cuts the airflow off. Something fierce. Coil looks like impacted, but yeah, I'm sure you can get a little bit of air through there. Yeah, see so the grease, it's really nice. Like I said, this thing has been through hell and back. Something about, I think the fans weren't running or something. I gotta get a better description. You can see right there that we got a crap load of water. So the thing was probably froze up. So using your spidey senses there, you can tell the coil probably wasn't wasn't clean and clear. I definitely had something going on. So it doesn't do it right away, it does it after a while. I said they're hearing something about the fan. The fans seem to be running to me. I see daylight even though the thing's got issues. I think this has got a leak too. I was on this one several, I don't know, at least a year or more ago and had a leak. Tore everything off of it, couldn't find anything leaking. Added a high side, low side tap on it so we can kind of see what's going on. Might be the same thing, might just be low on charge again, but honestly, it feels like it's getting cold. I throw a gauge on it just to see the suction pressure's at. It's a warm, so the fans should not be running yet. Let's go here and see if the time delay thing's working. Yep. It's not kicking on, that's good. This means the time delay is probably working. Let it run for a minute, I'll go grab the gauges. It's gonna be potentially a lower suction because those fans aren't running in the evaporator section. Both fans here, even though they're a little restricted looking, they're running. We're just gonna let it run for a minute. It's starting to freeze up, you can see that as it gets colder and colder, which is good. So, let's watch it and see what happens. They said they thought they heard the noise from down below. I think it's probably up above. As soon as those fans kick in, we'll see. We're still waiting for the fans to come on, but I did go ahead and mark that. We're going to see if it uh, changes position, make sure this clock is working. 
may tear that cage off of this condenser so it gets better airflow. That way it's got, it doesn't have this uh, restrictive rabbit cage looking shield around it so it'll actually get some airflow through it. But I'm not seeing what they're describing as something that would have been hitting the fan blades as of yet. So hopefully it'll peak up here in a minute. I think it's already starting to move off of there. Start a track already on that. So I just thought of this though. Um, let's look at that. It's hitting something. So that fan blade there is hitting on something. And that one there is free. So we've got. Yeah, that one's free. The left one there is hitting on something. For some reason, let's tear it apart. So this wire nut right here goes down in here like that. Just barely hitting that fan blade. We'll just push that back over and down in there. At some point in time, either things have froze and lifted it up, moved it around. I mean, it's not like popping back out over here very easily. Fan's not hitting nothing now, and it's plenty of clearance. You can see all the frost and stuff. I think it's pretty good there. It's got a wire tie around it to the other one. I wouldn't be surprised if it could have been taken apart or leak search for the 15th time or something, who knows. Let's see how it does now. It's finally running. Both of them are running. Just blowing some air through the coil there. Had to hold our button there. Got a lot of frost on the back, but like I said, this is a total warm pull down, hot pull down. Let's see how she does now. Fortunately, I'll have to watch this for a little while to see that it pulls down. They said originally it started getting uh, warmer and then eventually they started hearing the hit and the noise or the noise hit yeah eventually heard the fan blades hitting that wire nut which they didn't know that that's what it was at the time there's 35 psi 20 came in at negative 15 I think downside of these is not having my PT chart built into them but I'll let this uh, run for a little bit and see if you can get down to temperature or near it Here's a unit that I'm yet to put out the video, but my little trap I made, which theoretically probably wasn't quite deep as what you'd normally figure, is working like it should. Because for years, it had been rusting out the bottom of that. We're just kind of waiting for that thing to drop in temp, so I thought I'd come over here and check this thing over. I don't want to get called right back for something stupid again. The defrost clock is tracking time. If you look at it before, it was at the six mark there, bottom of the clock. We've got the Cooper Atkins here dropping to 38 degrees. A little bit faster and more accurate than the, the generic dial up there. This has got a, a uh, duct sensor like that right there with a gator clip type thing holding the place. This is one of the other ones I really enjoy. It's, it's uh, SH66A, super accurate. Usually it's within 0.3 degree of accuracy. It's even more accurate than what the uh, Luke is. Not as pretty, I guess, and bigger. Modified this one, put some magnets on the back of it, riveted them on. Works out great for that. Got the different probes for different things. I have a feeling that's about all there was to it. Got the uh, air filter replaced there. Coil's a little dirty, but it's not like it's really blocking it completely. I'm not going to do this on a Sunday. Uh, we can always do more on it later, but just like I said, this thing's been chucking along and keeps getting kicked along down the road. So uh, I'm going to wait for this to drop maybe down to 20 area and then uh, wrap it up. We are at 10 degrees and been doing pretty good so far. I'm going to say we're fine. I think the fan blade was hitting the wire nut and either it stopped the fan blade from turning which then reduced the capacity and just the noise in itself made them want to shut it off because they thought something was majorly wrong which obviously would have been when it shorted out eventually. So we got a new filter on there that's going to help them out quite a bit to get better airflow through there. We know the defrost clock is working and the refrigerant pressure seems to be fine from what I'm seeing. Haven't looked recently. <clears throat> but it does appear to be in that 25 area, so that's about negative 15, negative 10 area, so I would say we're probably fine. Um, yeah, we're just gonna wrap this thing up. Hopefully this is the last call of the day. 
Paul, thanks for calling with me on these three calls. So hopefully you guys enjoyed them. They were easy, but still they took a chunk out of my Sunday, which is the way it goes. So if you guys enjoyed the video and you want more like it, make sure you subscribe. Check me out on Instagram where I post the most things when I'm not posting videos. Facebook is pretty much dead. Don't really give a shit about it. So until next time, everybody, catch you on the next one. Later.